Southeast with their financial needs. We offer personal loans, bill consolidation loans, and starter loans. So stop by our office today. We're conveniently located in the shopping center between Walmart and Goodwill, or you can call us at 427-4237. Or you can apply online at www.1ffc.com. First Franklin Financial Corporation and MLSR number 1416654, Georgia Residential Mortgage Licensee number 5656. Local news on WIFO. It's time now for a look at the latest in local news. In the news, the Jesuit City Commissioners met Tuesday evening, and despite the fact that the topic was not on the agenda for discussion, the topic of Republic Services proposing to bring in co-ash and dump it into the landfill that they own and operate here in Wayne County was discussed as Commissioners Bobby Tynes and Ray Haas spoke, voicing their concerns. In opposition to such a proposal, Mayor David Earl Keith read a letter that was written by City Attorney Michael Connor on behalf of the Mayor and the City Commissioners to the Corps of Engineers Office in Savannah stating their concerns and opposition to a permit being granted to Republic to which would allow them to build a rail yard and bring the coal ash into Wayne County. The concern by the city officials and the one issue that will get the Corps' attention is the efforts to protect the wetlands here in the county. That letter was hand-delivered to the Savannah Office of the Corps of Engineers by City Attorney Michael Connor, <clears throat> but letters and public hearings on Tuesday seemed to take a back seat to the Commissioner's Ray House comments that the city and county and Solid Waste Authority needs to join forces and have a unified front, and the decision needs to be made whether or not to take legal action against Republic in order to fight their efforts for a rail yard in the county by the landfill. I says the decision needs to be made quickly. In regards to that, here were his comments Tuesday night at the city meeting. We have the money and the county has the money, so the fact of the matter is, is if we want to pursue some course of action, it's going to be legal, and it needs to be pretty quick. Because if we don't, they're going to be, you know, they can say all day long that they do not have a contract and they've got a contract coming. There's no doubt in my mind or they wouldn't even be contemplating spending the money that they're going to be spending to put a railhead in. That's just out. So the bottom line is they've got a customer. And, uh, and look, I'm not, here's my problem with it. I'm not so worried about their handling of this material today. Okay? And look, I don't think I'm going to live 30 or 40 years. I just don't believe that. But, but our kids and our grandkids and many of many of y'all or many of us may live that long, and it, we may live to see this be a terrible situation in our community. It very well could poison the Satilla River out there, and it could very well poison all the groundwater. Now, that having been said, I don't think it gets to the aquifer. I'm not really too I'm not really too concerned about that. But now we're getting way down deep in the weeds. Uh, the idea is, is I don't think we want to have a hearing and what was done here is fine. We need to come up with a position as to whether or not we're going to be for this or against this. And we need to do it pretty quick. I didn't think this, we didn't have it on the agenda. So, but we need to probably come up with this pretty quick. We need to get to the Solid Waste Authority Board. We need to bring the attorney. We need to get the county's attorney and we need to get the county together. And we all need to sit down and see where we're going and come out with some sort of a, some sort of a unified face. Commissioner Bobby Townsend, who first brought the topic up Tuesday evening, states that he's received many phone calls, emails, and he says no one he's talked to is in favor of Republic's proposed project. Townsend says he's not in favor of spending thousands of dollars in a legal fight, but he says the attorneys from both the city and county need to be on the same page in case this heads to a legal battle. Townsend says companies like Republic have expensive lawyers and have deep pockets, and Townsend says he would like to see that avoided, but he does believe that action of some type needs to be taken to stop this project. WIFOFM talked with Chairman of the County Commissioners Wednesday, Kevin Copeland. He says all the County Commissioners are against the proposed project as well, but Copeland stressed at this time the County Commissioners and Administrator are still in the fact-finding session and in no way at this point talking legal action of any kind against Republic. Copeland says the key is to find out if the contract in 2000 is still binding due to the fact that the county has the contract with Republic who owns and operates the landfill. Corps of Engineers is granting Wayne County a public meeting on the issues of wetlands. They have made it clear they have no authority over the landfill or what is put in the landfill. <clears throat> the Corps of Engineers' major concern is any ill effects such materials would have on the wetlands and the water quality in the county. That meeting is set for sometime in March. The exact date and time and location has not been determined. 
the wetlands is the issue that seems to be where progress for the Wayne County officials are concerned so as it can be made. As County Attorney Andy Beaver states, the county ordinance in 2000 requires that a permit has to be granted by the county commissioners before any wetlands can be disturbed. If Republicans grant a U.S. Army Corps of Engineers permit to proceed with its plans for a rail spur, they state the company still must then apply to the county for a permit before it can proceed with the project. What's interesting to note is that Republic has already allowed COASH into the county landfill. An environmental manager for Republic who spoke at a solid waste authority meeting this week says that the landfill has already received 800,000 tons of COASH from Jacksonville Electric Authority between the years 2006 and 2014. Asked why the company stopped bringing the COASH into Wayne County. The answer was because the company knew that the environmental regulations were about to be changed and the company was attempting to be ready for those changes. Again, WIFOFM continues to follow the story as it develops. Again, a public meeting is expected to be set up by the Corps of Engineers in Wayne County sometime in the month of March. Once the date and time and location is set, we'll pass that information along to our listening audience. We'll be back with more news after this word from our sponsor, other commercial messages, so please stay tuned. For over 60 years, Ultimaha Federal Credit Union has been a part of our community. Folks you know and trust, always here when you need us. We're celebrating our 60th anniversary by bringing you better ways to handle your money. By updating our system and implementing great new features and benefits to you, like an automated phone number that allows you quick, safe, and easy access to your account 24-7. The ability to transfer funds and send money to anyone with just a few simple steps. The security of e-statements, no more hard copies through the mail, and you can set up text alerts that give you instant information about your account. Here's to another 60 years of making life easy for our members. More community involvement and continuing to be more efficient, safe, secure, stronger, and better than ever. Drop by any time or visit us online at ultimaha.org and join us today to reap the benefits of a financial institution that's run by hometown people with a hometown attitude towards service. Come home to Altamaha Federal Credit Union, Jessup, Ludawisi, and Scriven. Hospitals, places where healing happens. They foster health and represent hope. From providing treatment and comfort to the sick to welcoming new life into the world, hospitals are mainstays in healthy, optimistic communities. Being technologically savvy and having equipment rivaling that of large hospitals, Wayne Memorial offers cutting-edge procedures with world-class personalized care. Such care is provided by a team consisting of specialists, driving in from larger hospital systems, as well as our local physicians we've come to know so well. Healthcare delivered locally saves a patient time, money, and the hassle of traveling out of town. We are here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You have a choice in your health care, and we thank you for choosing us every day. Wayne Memorial Hospital, caring for the community. National Weather Service confirming a tornado yesterday at Fort Stewart. They are going to be at Fort Stewart today assessing the damage confirmed that it was a tornado touched down Wednesday afternoon. Powerful storm system ripped through the area and left down power lines, trees, and debris all across Fort Stewart. Authorities on post say they believe a tornado came through around 5 p.m., traveled two, three miles on post, traveling west to east. The National Weather Service will make the official call about a tornado and confirm its intensity, but they state they know a great deal of damage was left in the storm's path. As far as soldiers going to work today, military years. officials say it, is, it will be business as usual. It will be up to the unit commanders to decide if there will be any delays or changes in schedules for their unit. Garrison commander anticipates total cleanup will take at least two to three days. They said as of right now, there are no reports of any injuries from the severe weather. They say that's the good news. They say they don't have any injuries reported, but again, significant damage to trees, vehicles, and homes at Fort Stewart. There is a hotline set up to assist soldiers, families, and civilians with the latest information. That toll number is 1-866-586-3116. So again, a tornado yesterday at Fort Stewart. Friday is the big event for Fairhaven here in Wayne County. It's going to take place at Coastal Pines Technical College. Gets underway at 7.30 p.m. Several local stars returning to southeast Georgia to support the Fairhaven Starry Night event. Tickets are available for $25 each or five for $100. And on hand will be Crystal Hopkins, Miss Georgia's Adeline Kennerly, Miss Georgia's Outstanding Team, Miss Victoria Smith. Also on hand will be Members of Quirky's World Class Karate, Gina's Academy of Dance, and Young Attitudes Dance Center. Again, tickets available at Fairhaven, Prime South Bank, or the Chamber of Commerce. Again, tickets are $25 each. If you need a number to call, the number is 588 1998. 
Focus of hog hunters will be in Wayne County February 19th through 21st with the Wayne County Board of Tourism's Hog Jam. Once again, hunters will be allowed to hunt anywhere it is legal in the state of Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Tennessee, and South Carolina. Five-state hunt begins at 2 p.m. on Friday, February 19th, and Sunday, February 21st at 2 p.m. Registration for the hunt will close at 6 p.m. February the 16th. Registration is $50 for bow or gun hunters, a $200 for a dog team of up to four hunters. Teams of six will be allowed with each additional team member paying $50 to hunt. Children under 16 can hunt free with a registered paid adult. All hogs must be weighed in at the J.C. Fairgrounds in Jessup, and participants can hunt anywhere in these states. They have legal permission to hunt. The tournament has a payout of $8,000. Registration forms are available at the depot or Odom or Scriven City Halls or online at active.com. If you need more information, simply call the Tourism Board office at 427-3233. Once again, the dates of the Hog Jam, February 19th through the 21st. Wayne County Chamber of Commerce is inviting the public to attend the first State of the County Luncheon to be held on Tuesday, February 23rd at the Paul Scott Polytech Center at Coastal Pines Technical College. Guest speakers will be city and county government leaders along with the school superintendent. The representatives will discuss their goals, challenges, and overall health of the community. They state you won't want to miss out on this opportunity to hear what local leaders have to say about issues addressing the community. Table sponsorships are available with eight reserved seats. Tickets are $15 for chamber members, $20 for non-members. The buffet line will begin at 1130 that Tuesday. The program begins at 12 noon. Again, the date Tuesday, February 23rd. For more information, call the chamber at 427-2028. We'll be back with some final news notes after this word from our sponsor of the commercial messages. So please stay tuned. Altamaha Federal Credit Union has been a part of our community. Folks you know and trust, always here when you need us. We're celebrating our 60th anniversary by bringing you better ways to handle your money, by updating our system and implementing great new features and benefits to you, like an automated phone number that allows you quick, safe, and easy access to your account 24-7, the ability to transfer funds and send money to anyone with just a few simple steps, the security of e-statements, no more hard copies through the mail, and you can set up text alerts that give you instant information about your account. Here's to another 60 years of making life easy for our members. More community involvement and continuing to be more efficient, safe, secure, stronger, and better than ever. Drop by any time or visit us online at altamaha.org. And join us today to reap the benefits of a financial institution that's run by hometown people with a hometown attitude towards service. Come home to Altamaha Federal Credit Union. Jessup, Ludowisi, and Scriven. They used to refer to the late James Brown as the hardest working man in show business. We call our boy Woody the hardest working man in the car business. Because you know what? He works at it. Work it, baby. Works hard to come up not only with the price and payment you want, but the vehicle you want. Woo-hoo! Better get to Baxley and put Woody to work for you. You ain't lying. All of us work at it. Why? Because we want you happy. Happy to come back and do business with us again. And happy enough to recommend us to your family and friends. Get on in here and put us to work. Talk to me. If you're looking for more truck for your truck buck, better get to Baxley and talk to Woody. This is Cole Swindell, and I recommend the Woody Folsom Auto Group for all your auto needs. Sales, service, and financing. These folks will treat you right. I can promise you that. Find new roads. Talk to us at Woody Folsom Automotive, Baxley, USA. Nobody sells Chevy, Buick, GMC, or used cars for less. Final closeouts on all 15. Get on in here and put us to work. Talk to me. Final notes and news. Wayne County Commissioners met Monday evening. One last item of business was discussion under items with Commissioner's Land Management, or otherwise county zoning. Commissioner Ralph Hickox had it put on the agenda under his items with Commissioners, but when the topic came up, he wanted it tabled and put on next month's agenda. Hickox and James Thomas appear to be wanting to readdress the issue of rezoning in the county. Hickox and Thomas state without it. Issues such as mining and coal ash and who knows what else will continue to come up. And he says without zoning, Wayne County cannot protect its landowners. And Chairman Kevin Copeland and Commissioner Jerry Shag Wright stated Monday that they are hearing from their constituents. And Copeland and Wright say that they are hearing that they do not want zoning, that they're anti-zoning. Copeland even stated that for all his constituents interested to please call him and state their opinions on this issue to him. Copeland says the people he's talked to do not want zoning. Hickok says he's not out to affect the farming community. He and Thomas state that that was the issue that killed the last proposal that many people volunteered many hours and days hashing out. The proposal was to be put to a vote, but it never came to a vote, and the issue was dead in the water and has remained dead for many years. 
But now with DuPont mining and Republic's proposal to bring in coal ash, Hickok says the issue needs to be revisited. He says he'd like to see another committee formed to work on the issue. Hickok has asked that the issue be put on the March agenda so the commissioners can have a discussion on how they want to address the issue of county rezoning. And WFOP will continue to follow this story as it develops. Delvis Dutton announced this week his intent to run for State House District 157, a seat he used to hold in Atlanta serving Tadnell Evans in a portion of Wayne County's Tadnell County business in place during a campaign focused on fiscal responsibility, ethical transparency in government, and return to the founding principles of our state and nation. Delvis Stutton will be our special guest tomorrow here live on the Butch and Bob Show. That's going to do it for the latest in local news. Sports comes your way next in a few minutes. Bob Morgan saying have a great day. You've been listening to local news on WIFO. When it comes to growing a family business, we understand the business of growing. At First Southern...